Here on top of the sect is tying this stuff. Your test begin six lines from the top of the from the bottom of the Amid. We begin the third parak in sect of tainus. Parak say the tainus able, which we continue on this theme about the fast on when there is no rain in the uh, in the in the land of Israel and uh, what the procedures are. Some of the things we in today's daf are, as we said, we start the third paragraph, what's called Pirkei de Chasida, because it contains many Agadah to Gemara, about pious people. What to do when problems and troubles other than drought occur, in regards to the fasting and the screaming and the crying, when fasting on Shabbos and Yom Tov is permitted, the merits of Chrini HaMagal and Magdim Megurian, and how they brought rain, we'll see if we actually do that story. So the key terms we constantly discuss in the Rezav are Hala Godl, which is what we see on Shabbos, the Kilo and Chazdai, Tzfichin are the aftergrowths that grow in the Shemitah year. We begin the current daf on the bottom of the Tzfichin, the beginning of the third pair. Say the Tainus Elu Ha'amar. So the order of these fasts that were mentioned in the first pair of Yerim and Al, that we said that in the beginning, first the Yechidim, which are the pious people, they start fasting a series of fasts, and then the Tzibur, they go and they fast for 13 fasts if they're not answered. So this is all talking about, says the Mishnah, but if the time of the first Revia of the Yaira, where we said there's two series of fasts, there's two reigns, there's Yaira and Malkish, we say this in Kriya Shema. Yaira is the first reigns, Malkish is the later ones. So if the first Revia, which is three Revias of rain, and it didn't rain, so then they fast in the order that we had said, in the previous Mishnah's mouth. And that's what the Mishnah's come to qualify if it didn't rain. Avol, but this is what they're coming to contrast now. But Smachim, Shoshanu, well, let's say it did sprout, but it sprouted not the normal way. So instead of wheat, it came out thistles, uh, instead of barley, it came out ruined or some other deviation. So then, Masrin Lemiyah. Then we go ahead and we scream right away and which says, says includes even the fasting, and even by the first ones, meaning we don't wait till after the uh, later time to start screaming and fasting, because all the stringency, the later ones are over here right away, because this is something weird, this is something abnormal, and if we scream out on this right away. So to, let's say, it stopped raining between the rains, between the first and the second rains, for a period of Arbam Yom, for 40 days, which that's a simon of Betzairus, that's a sign of that there's a, a drought coming. Masri Nalein, and some Gisarius have the word Miyat, so they start screaming on that right away also. Again, we don't wait for this whole series to start screaming out. All this turns into later fast, which we said as they kept on going up worse and worse and worse, that this can be true. That started right away. Neshemak is Betzairus because it's something that's a sign of a food shortage. Yardulit smachen, avo lo yardulilon. Let's say it uh, the, had the type of rain that could help for sprouts, but it's not the type of rain that could help for a tree. So you want to explain what exactly, what type of rain would that be? Well, the even let's say it's the type of rain that would help for trees, but not for the sprouts. Well, let's say something that would help for the sprouts and for the tree. But it wouldn't be enough rain that would help for the pits and for the caves and for the different uh, dug places, which in Baba Basa, the Gemara explains what's Boer, Sheikh, and Ma'ara, but they're all basically gathering places of rain for drinking. So again, if there wasn't enough water for that, also Masrin Lamiyad, they would scream on that right away. But then, so to ear, so let's say you have a city that it didn't rain on that city. So for example, it rained in one city, but the neighboring city didn't rain, which is a curse. The so like says the Pasuk in Amos, I mean, it's not like regular not having rain. It's actually one town didn't have and one town did have. They were also, like the Sibbis of the Pasuk Nam is, from Tarte Lirachas. I'm going to rain on one city, but Lirachas Layamter and the other city I'm not going to rain. Chalka Achas Timotu, Bugema, one part I will rain, Bugema, etc., one part I will not. So as we continue to review the test of the Alf, Oiseir, Misan, Misrats. So that town right away has to fast and scream again because it's not just like it didn't rain, it's a semicolon for that town. So you have to fast and scream. Achas Vivisem, Misan, is now. All the neighboring areas of that town, they have to fast because, the t- like Rashi explained, that town that didn't rain, they're going to go and buy their grain in that other city, and then they're going to have a famine. So they have to fast, but the but they're not as severe because ultimately they do have rain, so they don't have to scream out. Kiva says, no, Masrias, but let me sound this. It's the other way around. They scream out, but they don't fast. So the inverse of the Tanakam.
Let's see if you have a town that there's a, a plague. Or if let's say the walls and the houses fell down in the wind. So this is also a calamity, it's also a tragedy. So that town, they fast and they scream out. And all the areas around that, they fast, but they don't scream out. Where the Bikivoy says, no, they scream out and they don't fast. Says the Mishnah, what's this plague, what's this pestilence? It's here, and this is important to know regarding when there is like a pandemic or something, what do we qualify that? So the ratio the Mishnah tells us, if it's a city that there's 500 um, able bodied men, and for three consecutive days, you had three people who died. That would be the ratio of that's considered a plague that this is uh, people are dying, and then you would have this halacha of misana and being masras. But less than that, that's not considered a endeavor, it's not considered as, as a plague. The Mishnah continues, we're running these things, we scream out in all places. In other words, if let's say you see it in Spain, you can already be masreen in bubble. Or if you have it in bubble, which is in Babylon, which is in Iraq or, or whatever, and you'll, you'll be masreen in, in Spain, as the mission itself explains, because it's called the Makam Aleches, which obviously we're all concerned about with the pandemic. It's the same idea. You find out about it in South Africa, and moments later you hear about it in some other country. So even if it's in one place, anyone who hears about it will be masreen so that it shouldn't come onto them. And what are those things? Allah Shedafan. Regarding the wind blasts of the grain, of the Yerokin and on the yellowing, which is a type of illness, which is a type of locust, and on wild animals, which are uh, could attack people, and regarding literally the sword, but it means armies that are coming to kill and destroy wherever they are. So so they scream out about it, when it's something that's a, a moving type of a, uh, a Maka, a uh, calamity that's on the go, which obviously that's instead of like a pandemic, same thing, no matter where you are, you have to daven about it and you have to be masras because they could come wherever a person is. As the Mishnah brings a maizam, she ordered the came to me to Shalim lo Rehem. The elders had gone from Yerushalayim to their, to their other cities in Eretz Yisrael, because of the and they made a tightness where they lived, al shenir kamli pi because they found uh, something very small, like the opening of the, uh, the fullness of the opening of the oven. Shemur is going to explain that terminology. But Shadafin Ba'ashkelon, of wind blast in Ashkelon, which is in the Philistine area near Eretz Yisrael. But because over there, they had, so they were going to tie this again because this is something that is a, a makam alechas. Very good at this. Additionally, they made it a fast, al Shachlu Ze'evim, that there were wolves that um, ate up which that's a chayira, that's the case we said before of a wild animal, which is makam alechas, shnei tenoik is bebayad. In Transjordan, they ate up two children, so in Eretz Yisrael they made this uh, tainus. Rebuse him, he says even more than that, they did not because they ate the children, because they were seen, they came into town, when do you see a wolf walking through the street? So because of that, that's what they made again, a makam alechas is something that it could come and go, and no matter where a person lives, they have to be masurin on that. Mishnah continues, Al Eglu Masreen, regarding these things with Masreen, which Rashi says, Masreen, screaming out means with Amnenu, Hashem should help us, the Shabbos on Shabbos. What are the things that are so um, severe that even on Shabbos you're going to Masreen? So, Sal Ir Shekifu Nachr Nahar. It's a city that was surrounded with Gentile or with a river. If you have a, a boat that is capsizing, that is it's shaking in the seas, he says, No, you're not Masreen. I mean, or he qualifies the Pinu the Tanakam. It says, Lazara, it's only for help, which we have, we have other interpretations from Rashi in previous Baruch and what that means. But it's like calling out to others, but without for screaming out. It's not, you can't really be mas, like Masreen and it's Aka, but you can do Lazara. Shabbat Timni, I mean, he says, Af al Hadever. He says that also for a plague, you would be Masreen on Shabbat. That's not one of those things that are so crisis mode that you would be able to be Masreen even on Shabbat. Mr. continues, I'll call Tzadah Shalei Tabal at Tzibur. Regarding any difficulty that should not come on the Tzibur, which Rashi says that's a, uh, what's called Lishna Al-Yanak, because we say it in a uh, euphemism, but it's really saying that did come. But Azon Lish Kumen, so if it would, but if it does happen, the, the, that Masrin Alein, 
So any tzara that comes to Kala Yisrael you scream out of, you say Amenu. Chutz Mureb Gisham, except if it's just an abundance of rain, which is difficult for people because it's too much, it's too much rain, but it doesn't ruin the grain, which the Gemara is going to explain why can you not be Masriyan. But something like that you cannot be Masriyan. And actually the Mishra brings a story, a famous story, to illustrate this. There was a story they said to Chaini, the circle maker. His spal shed the gesham, daven that rain should come down. Allah said to them, Su bichnisu tanuri pesachim, go out and bring in the ovens they would use to roast the carbon pesach, which they were in the courtyards and they're made out of earthenware, and it's a movable oven. And he says, bring it into the homes b'shlushli moiku, so that it shouldn't get dissolved from the rain because it's it's going to rain. His spal will lay the gesham hidaven, and it didn't rain. So Masa, what did he do? So Og Uga, this is where he gets his name of Ma'adol, he went and he made a circle, <coughs> and he stood inside the circle. And he sat in front of Hashem, the Bible shall master the world. Your sons placed their face on me. I'm like a child of yours. I'm like a, 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 son, a household member of yours. I swear in your great name, I'm not going to move from here. So you have mercy on your sons. So So the rain started dripping. Ami says, "Look, I've shot. This is not how I asked." It sounds like our kids. Says, "What do you mean? I want that it's a gezunt. It should it should flow rain to fill up the pits." So it started coming with a fury. It sounds like us. Amar. So he said, "Look, I've shot. This is not how I asked." And I want rain that's. Well, that's, that's pleasant, that's a blessing, and that's uh, uh, something with a, with a good eye. So Yad Kitiknan, so the rain came in its, in its normal manner. Until the Jews in Yushalayim had to go up to the Temple Mount near Gisham. There was so much rain that it was flooding, they had to go up to the Harbais. They came and they said to Chaynim Adul, just like you daven that the rain should come down. It's daven that it should go away. Amalem, he said to them, Tzuru, go out and see, Im nimches eben hatayim. It's different in Gisayis, but our Gisayis is hatayim. There was a stone in Yerushalayim called eben hatayim. Tayin is no word of, of loss. Whoever would lose a lost object, Sigmar says, the Bermasid of Chochaz Amaz would come to that stone and they would announce over there who, and the, the guy would give his simon. So see, if that stone, this huge stone where people get up there on the platform, if that dissolved also. <laughs> and it was because, as we'll see in the Gemara, he didn't want to daven. You don't daven that a, a bracha should go away. So, like we said before, for Reb Gishamim, you're not um, you're not Masriyan, um for that tzar. Now, Shalchle Shem Ben Shatach. So Shem Ben Shatach sent to him. He says, "Il Molich Chayniat." It's not for the fact that you're Chayni, because during the Lachani, I would decree on you that you should be excommunicated because of the disgrace to the dignity of Hashem that you talk to him in such a uh, flippant type of a manner. Says, what can I do to you? That you you make uh, these these mistakes or you act in this way in front of Hashem. And he does according to your will. Just like a son that acts like that to his father. And he does what he wants. Your father and your mother will rejoice. The one that gives birth to you will be glad because. Again, you're like that type of kid, the Bachag the kid, he gets away with all this, uh, how he asks, and the Rebbein Shalom is the same way with you too. And the Mishra continues, going back to the uh, theme of Primasani. If they were fasting, in general, any time we mention all these Prok and Gerada Masechda, they have a public fast. And let's say the other Mishra, let's say, oh, the Tefillah is on the Skabul, and it starts to rain. So, but they're fasting, but now it's raining. So what are we fasting for? So it depends. If it starts raining before the sun rises, they don't have to complete that fast. Because sometimes they started fasting already from the night, night before by the later fast. But if, let's say, it only rained after the sun was already rising, then they should finish that fast. Lazam, he says, No, if it, if it rained at least before noon, you don't have to finish it. But if it already went afternoon, then you should finish it. And my sister should go to the time is below it, and there was actually a story where they made a, a decree for a public fast in Lud. <laughs> and it rained before noon. Well, the Ritavim, the Ritavim said to them, like Rebbe Leza said, <laughs> go out and eat and drink and make a yomtiv. 
They went out, they ate, and they drank, and they made a yomtum. And they came in later in the afternoon, and they said, which the reason why is because, as we'll see, that you have to be uh, well fed when you want to say, and they couldn't do it because they were fasting. And he held like a blessing that if it didn't, uh, if it rained before noon, then you don't have to complete that fast. Now, we said in the Mishnah that say the Tainis Ha'elu Ha'amar. We said that the order of all these fasts that we spoke about in the previous Per'akim, we said was only regarding the, the first rain. Now, Revia, like we said, Yaira and Yimalkish, the earlier rains and later rains. And then Yaira, there's three Revias, which we had said about the different dates. We said uh, there's a uh, Zion Cheshven, and the, the different dates that it has. So the Gemara has a problem, says the Minu. That seems to be contradicting from the following Brisa, because Revia Rishayim, the Vishni Elishal, the Brisa says, that the our mission makes it sound like that by the first revia that doesn't rain, you have a fast. Problem is the Brisa says revia is showing the first timing for the rain, Vishnu and the second timing of the rain are lishal, <coughs> meaning even though it didn't rain, not by the first, not by the second, they wouldn't fast. They would just ask for rain. That's why one of them is when the first one is when you start saying with Saint Talmudza. Shlishis lishamis. The third one is when you start fasting. That's, that's, that's difficult. Our, our, our Mishnah that makes it sound like that the order of these fasts are by the first revia, and the Brisa makes it sound like it's by the third one. Maybe this is Nahachim. Our Mishnah actually is saying the same as the Brisa. Say the time is ha'amar emosai. Our Mishnah is coming to say the order of the fast that were said. When is this? This was man sheyotzer revia rishayim vishnia vishlishis. Because Rashi explains the whole year really they call it the revia rishayim. So really, although our Mishnah says it said by Revi Rishayna, we mean when they finished the Revi Rishayna Shnei Mishlishes. Well, here the Gishama didn't rain. That's when you can have these series of fasts. And then our Mishnah continues and said, Avol, you're the Gishama Revi Rishayna. But let's say even if it did rain by the first Revi, but Zorbal it's something. But let's say you planted and it didn't sprout, or Inami Samchu because of Nishtanu. But let's say it did sprout, but it came out in some weird way. Then you're going to scream out right away, like it said in the Mishnah. Now, Amr Nachman, he qualifies this halacha, he says, <coughs> He said specifically when it's, when it's warped, when it changed, that's when you for sure scream out right away, because you have to daven that it should come out in the normal way as, as the grain is supposed to come. But if let's say it came out dry, then there's no need, because the Rashi says from this point onward it's not going to help. So it's a tefillah shav. When do you scream out right away? When it's coming out in a weird way, so that's when you would daven. It sounds like, but regarding Jerai, then you wouldn't. So if you want to learn Tzricha, no, what we needed to say is the Akun. Rashi mean, explains that to me, that it came out in the stalk, where it was a little bit misukin, and then it got dry. That since it was fixed a little bit, it was remedied a little bit, because it came out in the stalk, that if you're going to daven, it might help. Rashmon, that's what Reb Nachman is going to tell us, that this akna that coming out as a stalk <coughs> is insignificant, and therefore if it's dried up, then there's nothing, it's nothing to know. There's a shot. If it only was nishtanu, then it's something that you could still ameliorate, it could still help. And that's what we say, you won't, you won't wait like for not having rain. When it comes out, either like it doesn't spread at all, or if it spreads, but it comes out in a weird way, that's when you're going to daven right away. The Mishnah said also, we said also that if less of the rain stops between the, the rain that it's supposed to have for a period of 40 days, so that's a makis bitzayim. So it says, my makis bitzayim. What is this um, affliction of a bitzayim? So Amr Rabbi Yudim Rabbi says it's a makam avil de bitzayim. So it means to say that if this is a maka, there's a problem that will lead to a food shortage, which is because if it didn't rain for 40 days in between, or like we said, if it's going to come out in a, a weird way. These are things that um, are concerns and will be out right away. Now, the Gemara qualifies and says, what's what? I'm going to have It says, nara anara. Which Rashi says, that means to say, let's say there's no grain in one city. But in the other cities, there are, and you could bring it by the river on a boat. Rashi says it's talking about, let's say the rivers locally dry up, but Yisrael Meiz, the Gemara continues on the day. That's bitzurta. That's a bitzayrus, which is a food shortage. It's not a fan. Because since you could bring it by boat, which is very convenient, that's not a problem. And therefore, the way Tosis says, you would not be uh, misan on that. 
But medinta, medinta. But let's say you have to bring from one country to another country, and it has to be through by donkey because not over river. That's kafna. That's a famine, which a famine is worse than a bitzeres. And as Rashi says, since it's not easy to bring it by donkey, meaning there's only that much limited quantity to bring on the donkey. Right? We have all these big, huge ships that uh, you know, Iran keeps on making problems with. But these are why we're hearing about it because that's the that's you could bring the quantity that's an uh, incredible incredible amount. So if you if you can only bring it by by donkey, <coughs> that's more challenging, and that's going to be considered as a famine. Similarly, relating to what's considered a bitzurta, what's considered a a famine. So I'm Amr Chanina. He says so. If let's say for a saw, uh, meaning when a person is buying a saw of wheat, it's besella, it's for one seller, which is expensive, but a shricha, but it's around, you could buy, they have the stores have the food, so that's betsurta, that's a food shortage. But arba, which the gear says, saw in besella, like the bath has other words, meaning if you could buy four saw with a seller, which you could get much more for your money, but with a shricha, but there's no food to be had, it's a kafna, that's a famine. Because even though it's so cheap, but there's no food around. A similar qualification, I'm going to be able to say, didn't learn, El bezman shamois bezoil, who paid us beyaker. When did we say that it's going to be considered as a betsayrus? Is if money's cheap, which is inflation, and the produce is expensive. Abu mois beyaker, but if let's say there's no money to be found, who pays the result, but, the, but things are cheap, then you actually have to scream right, right away. Why? Because I'm going to says, and he says, I remember, there was a time when food was cheap. You could buy four saw with a seller. And still, there were so many bloated stomachs, which come from, from starvation, from the fact that there was no money. So things could be cheap. But if no one has money, so that's worse than having, um, than, than not having money and things are expensive because at least you, there's what to be gotten. But if someone does not have money, so then there's, it doesn't make a difference how cheap things are. Uh, that's, that's something that Masrin Lemiyat. Mishnah said that Yardul Tzmach and Amaloy Le'ilu, we said that there's all many types of rains that we need. And either one of them are not there, then we're going to be Masrin away. So one case was if it rains for the sprouts, but it wouldn't rain enough for the tree. So the more wonders how you get all these different cases. Bish lema with smoch malili mashkach. I understand that you could have a case that it's going to have enough rain for the sprouts, but not for the trees. Is the asanicha where if it comes calm rain, which the Gemara has seven of Gimel days, like calm rains is good for the produce, it's good for Paris, but asarazim. But it wasn't strong rain, which that's what's necessary for a tree. I can understand you can have a case where it's good for the trees and not for the sprouts. It came strong rain, but not calm rains. I understand you could have for both because it came calm rains for the period, and those it came strong rains for the tree. But it didn't come the rain that could be for pits and for the cave. Because you had strong rain and the calm rain. You too will ask but it didn't have a lot of rain, so it didn't fill up the pits. And the other time, this that we learned. That you are delivered, that you could have rain that will fill up the pits. But it will not be rain that will help for the produce and for the trees. How could you have that? How could you have so much rain that it wasn't calm? I wasn't furious. We're talking about what came pouring forth. Where that's not good, not for the produce and, and not even for the trees because it came pouring down like a tornado. And therefore, that would only be good filling up the pits, but that would not be good. So, if missing either one of them, we said that you're going to scream out for the rain. Relating a uh, related topic, turn around the Braisa. Masrin Ali Lonnex. We scream out if the trees don't have what they need of the rain, but Prisa Pesach, 15 days before Pesach. Alabayus for Shikim Aris. We scream out regarding if, let's say, there was not enough rain to fill up the pits, then, and the Gersa takes out the word of Philo, then we do the Prisa Chag. We do uh, 15 days before Sukkot, because we need it to give, to water our plants and to give to our animals. And I guess it takes up the next two words. And in England, mine lishtois, they don't have water to drink. Then they scream it right away, meaning, as Rav says, even before Pesachat, which you're in the summer months then, even so you must dream because everyone needs to drink. And the pits, the wells, are for people to be able to drink. Now, the Asian, the Yad 
And what does it mean that you scream at it right away? It means Shein Bechamish Bechamish means the next Monday, Thursday, Monday is when you scream out. Now, about Kulan, and regarding all of these, Ema Sreen Aleyin, we only uh, scream at Aleinu El Ba'afrach Yishalem. Only in that, um, in that, in that country where they had the depletion of the waters of the wealth. And the Askara, which sometimes it gets lodged in the person's mouth when he dies, a Misa Meshunda, a really distorted death. So Mizman Shish Misa, at a time when it is causing death, which this is a Maka Mushalachas, because it's, infe- it's an infectious disease and people die. So Mizman Shish so then they scream on that right away. So people are not dying, like maybe the Am- Am- Amikran, whatever it is that, that people are not sure if it's going to cause death, then you wouldn't have to scream out on that. More of it says the mission of Masrin Allah Gervai. Gervai is a certain type of a locust, which they deplete the, all the grain. And that you'll scream out, meaning even if you only saw like a few of them, because you know that the, they, they're going to mass, they're going to be coming. In contrast to Chagov, if it's just a, a little bit amount, that's something that's very common. And they don't deplete it as much as like Arba. So then you wouldn't have to. But Rosh Hashanah says, no, Avala Chagov, he says, even for the Chagov locust, that you, even if you see just a little bit of them, you have to be Masrin because they're going to come and they're going to eat up the whole crop. Then we're in the Brisa. Masrin al Hilamis. You scream out on the trees that when it doesn't have the appropriate rain, Bashar Shnei with the other years of the Shemitah cycle. But on Shemitah itself, no, because it's Hefker. So what, what are you screaming out for? Al Abaris, Al Sheikh, Al Aris, now regarding the well waters. So the Shemitah, even on Shemitah, yeah, because people always need a drink. And even though the rain is helping the ground on Shemitah, but we need it. For simply well, drinking water. So Lilam, he says, we scream out, Af Alilam is actually even on the trees, even the trees on the Shemitia. Why? Because it provides for the paupers. And as Rashi says, that even on the, the aftergrowth, it's called the Svikha, not the Shemitia, which are not so significant, it does help. And therefore, <coughs> which Taysa actually seems to have pointed out that it's not like that, but Rashi has on, yeah, it's, it's also for the paupers to eat the Svikha. Finally, to learn another brayso, Masrin al Ilam is b'shar shnei shibua. Scream out on the for the trees for the rain on the other years of shemitah cycle, and all the others. I'll check my mother's about the shemitah, like we said, and for the for the well waters even on the shemitah. Shem Ilam is says after Ilam is also for the trees, like we said, because it provides for the poor. The brayso continues Masrin al Asvich and Shvis. We scream out for the aftergrowth on the shemitah year. Nishes repan. That's something like we said because it does provide for the poppers that they could eat the aftergrowth, although you're not allowed to plant on shemitah. But the aftergrowth are permitted, so at least according to this mandamar, so therefore you, that's another reason why you daven for the trees on Shmitia. Finally, the Brahis, I'm going to be practices in the Yemshachar Beis Anikdash, from the day that the Beis Anikdash was destroyed, Nasu Gisham Tzimukim La'elam. The rain became, it sounds like Tzimukim, which is like uh, raisins, but it, I mean, it comes out hard. And moreover, says the Brahis, Yet Shana Shagishmem Merubin. You have some years that it has a lot of rain. Yeshon Shigishmer Mo'ad, you have some years that it has a little bit of rain. Moreover, Yeshon Shigishmer Yed Mizman, you have some years that the rain comes down in its appropriate times. Yeshon Shigishmer Yed Mizman, there are some years that it does not come down in its appropriate times, as it explains. Shon Shigishmer Yed Mizman, and the year that the rain comes down in its appropriate times, Ma'adema, what could that be compared to? Ma'ever Shanos and Liyabu Panasas and Echad Shabbos, to a servant that his master gives him what he needs, his allowance on Sunday. So Nintus Ifa Nefes Ketik, it comes out that the dough is going to be baked appropriately because he has time to bake it before Shabbos. <coughs> and the Chalas Ketik, and it's going to be eaten appropriately. Shana Shengish Mer Yerd Mizman, Lamadim, what could you be comparing a year that the, that the rain does not come down in its appropriate time? To a servant that his master gives him his allowance on Arab Shabbos. Nintus Ifa Nefes Ketik, it comes that the dough is not going to be baked appropriately. And the Chalas Ketik, the difference is not going to be eaten appropriately because it was baked hastily. And it, it didn't come out well. What can you compare a year that there's a lot of rain? To a, a, master, to a servant that his master gave him his whole allowance at one time. And he takes all that flour and he grinds it together. So Nintsu comes out, that the mill is grinding minakur from a large amount. What it would grind from the smaller mill. What does this mean? So Rashi explains. The norm is that some of the flour gets stuck to the mill. 
and therefore it's significant if you're doing a lot at a time or a little at a time. So to the rain, if it comes down a lot, it saturates the ground. So what the rocky part of the ground absorbs in the abundance of the rain is you're gaining because you'll have, because you always lose a certain amount of rain what gets uh, saturated by the rocky part of the ground that's, that doesn't go in and, and water the, the ground. And um, it's, it's going to have the same absorption whether there's a lot or a little. So it comes out that what it grinds from, it, that, that uh, it we grind from the core, what do we grind from the cow? The nimtsa isa echelis from that core comes out that the, <coughs> that the dough is, um, is eating from the core, meaning when we say we talk about the trough, which is where you need the dough, that it also gets stuck on the bottom from the dough itself, is kamay echelis from that cow. Is like what that eats away from the cow. Essentially, what that means to say is that you're you're uh, that you're going to lose a certain amount every time you grind. So if you're grinding a large quantity, you're going to save that because you do every time a little time, you're going to lose, 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 lose. So if you get the rain all at one time, you're also going to have the same thing because every time it rains, a little bit gets uh, gets into the rocky part. You're not going to get what you really need. So uh, that you gain more when it rains a lot at one time. Where shunshik, remember other mud, what could you compare to a uh, rain that it rains very little? Is Levish also laid up upon the Sasma Admat that uh, his master gives his servant a little bit at a time. Nimtur de Chaim comes out that the, the mill, Masha Tefnes in Akur, where it's going to grind from the Kur, is Tefnes in Akav, it's going to grind from the Kav. Nimtus is, meaning, and it's, you're doing it every time a little bit at a time. Nimtus is, Kamash and Echaz in Akur, Echaz in Akav. So through the rain, when it comes a little bit at a time, again, it gets absorbed into the rocky part. It's not going to really saturate the ground. So I another interpretation. This is Manchik Ishmael Marubin. Now, then, what can you compare to when there's a lot of rain? Someone who's uh, kneading clay. Initially, my name is has a lot of water. So, my name will come. The water's not going to get uh, dissolved. But you have a lot of water to be able to go ahead and really knead that clay very well. Initially, my mother has only a little bit of water. And every time he has only a little bit of water, a little bit of water, my name come. The water gets dissolved. But the in the the and the, 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 the uh, the clay doesn't really knead itself so well, and therefore again, it's it's better when you have gishmer marubin, and meaning at one time than having gishmer mud. Thank you to any time. Awesome. Sure.